I will lay out the general process to determine the moments on an indeterminate beam using the moment distribution method. There are five general steps. First step is to determine the stiffness factor. Second step is to determine the distribution factors. Third step is to determine the fixed end moments. Fourth step is to distribute the moments. The fifth step is to carry over the moments and we're going to go over each one of the steps in order to make it more clear. A sixth step would be to repeat steps 4 and 5 until the moments are small and not significant. I will go through step 1 and explain it for different beam and conditions. If we have a beam span with both ends fixed, then the stiffness factor for that span is as follows. If the beam span has one end pin or roller, then the stiffness factor for the span is as follows. The second step is to determine the distribution factors. I am going to use the following continuous beam to show how to determine the distribution factors for different beam span and conditions. Node A is fixed, so it will not distribute any moment. Therefore, distribution factor from A to B is zero. Node D is an overhang and it will not take or distribute any moment. Therefore, distribution factor from C to D is zero. Node C will distribute all its moment back to node B. Therefore, distribution factor from C to B is one. Node B is pin, but it's not at the end. It will distribute the moment to nodes A and C. Portion that would be distributed to nodes A and C depend on the stiffness factor of each span and it will be distributed proportionally as follows. Next step is to determine the fixed end moments. This depends on the type of loading over each span its end supports and its length. There are diagram tables for different type of loads. These are just a couple of examples. The fourth step is to distribute the moment at each knot to the adjacent spans. We need to do this with the following equation. The fifth step is to carry over the distributed moments to the opposite end from where they are coming using the following rules. I always like to use a table like this to keep track of my work. Given the following beam, I will determine the moment at point C using the moment distribution method. First, I will determine the stiffness factors for each span. Second, I will determine the distribution factors at each knot. Third, I will determine the fixed end moments at each support point. I will use the following table to record the distribution factors and fixed end moments. I will also use the table to help me keep track of my next steps. The next step is to distribute the moments using the following equation.
Next, I will carry over the moment from one support point to adjacent knots. I will distribute the moments one more time through the spans. I will sum the moments at each knot. Next, I like to draw a diagram to show the different beam spans with its corresponding moments. Finally, from the diagram, we can see that the moment at point C is 150 kips feet. Given the following frame, I will determine the internal moments at each one of its joints. First, I will determine the stiffness factors for each span. Second, I will determine the distribution factors at each knot. Third, I will determine the fixed end moments at each support point. I will use the following table to record the distribution factors and fixed end moments. I will also use the table to help me keep track of my next steps. The next step is to distribute the moments using the following equation. Next, I will carry over the moment from one support point to adjacent knots. I will continue to distribute the moments through the spans until the moment becomes insignificant. I will sum the moments at each knot. Next, I like to draw a diagram to show the different columns and beam spans with its corresponding moments. Thank you for watching. I would like to ask for your support by liking the video and subscribing to the channel. Thank you.